If your cast iron pan's gotten a little bit rusty, this is gonna be the video for you. If you take care of your cast iron, you'll be able to pass it on to your grandkids. This cast iron is only about four months old though. Now I picked it up in a place called Paradise. There was a horrible fire there called the campfire that destroyed 90% of the town. And this was one of the few things that I picked up from my grandma's house as we went through the ashes. They didn't really have the ability to go through and clean this up and make it usable again, but I knew that I could. And so I took it home with me and I'm gonna clean it up and I wanna show you guys exactly how it happened. There is a lot of rust on this cast iron and I know that I'm gonna to have to go straight for the wire brush but you should always go from the least aggressive to the most aggressive because some of the less aggressive methods will actually take off some of the surface rust so you don't have to take all the seasoning off. It might just be a, take a light cleaning or it may be as much as a wire brush or a sanding disc. With this one, we're gonna get it back shining black. The first step is to clean the pan with some soap and water. My goal was to get some of the ash off of it. After that, I took some steel wool and scrubbed it off. Now this would usually be enough for most pans that have been sitting under the counter that have been neglected just for a short time to get any of the surface rust out. In this case, we need to get a little bit more aggressive. If I wasn't gonna use it for a while, I made sure that I put it in the oven at 200 degrees so that way it would dry and the rust wouldn't get any worse. But even after all of that, we can see that there's still quite a bit of rust damage to this pan and we're gonna need to get some more work done. So one of the things I saw online was that if people took their pans and they put them in vinegar, it would break up some of that rust and make it easier to remove or remove it altogether. I wanted to test that, so I did a solution of half vinegar and half water, and I put it in there and I wanted to find out which one was better. Now there's some bubbling action that was good enough for a late night infomercial, but if you want to find out if it worked, you're gonna to have to wait till later on in the video. Okay, the next step is to take a wire brush to this. We've gotten a lot of the loose rust off. We wanna see if we can get some more of this off and get it back down to bare metal. Now, some of you made fun of me a little bit for the way I held the cast iron pan when I did this last time. So I just want you to know, I listened. We're gonna be kicking up a lot of dust since you wanna use a respirator mask as well as some eye protection so you can keep your eyes for later. Now I'm using a brass bristled wire brush and that made pretty quick work of getting some of the surface rust off. And by quick work, I mean this actually took quite a bit of time, but it was a lot easier than doing it by hand. If you want to follow along, I've got some of these items in the description below in case you want to find it, but you can also get them at your local hardware store. Okay, so the cast iron pan is starting to look really good. We've gotten most of the surface rust off, but the surface is still pretty uneven. At this point, I'm going to take a little bit farther with a strip disc. I'm going to try to take the top layer of metal off so that way I can see if I can get it smooth enough to be able to cook on it again. Now I've done this before in my previous videos where I showed how to people to make it completely smooth and I got three reactions from that. Number one, there's no reason why you should ever do that to your cast iron pan. They're nonstick straight out of the factory. Number two, that's the best idea ever. I always grind down my pans so they're nice and smooth. And finally, number three, the people who said I didn't take it far enough, who said I should have gone with 2000 grit sandpaper and shined it up to a mirror finish. So if that's proof of anything, it shows that you can't make everybody happy on the internet. So if you don't like that I'm doing this with my pan, then that's okay, don't do it to yours. The strip disc is primarily designed to remove paint as well as light surface rust, but we're using it to remove the top layer of metal, which will help it even out the surface and undo some of the damage done by the rust. Now we did the same thing on the inside, just took the top layer off to make it smooth so the food won't stick. We also did the same thing to the other pan. This is the one that we soaked in the vinegar, and as you can see, it's coming off a little bit easier. <sighs> so the vinegar worked awesome. If you're ever gonna have to do this, I do recommend soaking in vinegar for a few hours. The rust came off a lot easier on that one than the one that didn't soak. And with only a little bit of work, it's looking a lot better than it was before. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rinse this off in the sink and then I'm gonna throw it in the oven at 200 degrees just so it can dry. And then I'm gonna go take a shower and get all this nasty stuff off. The next step is we're gonna season it up with some flaxseed oil so that way it doesn't rust again. So I just finished the seasoning process and I wanna show you exactly what I did so you can recreate it. The first step to seasoning your cast iron is to preheat it just hot enough so that you can't touch it. This makes it easy for the second step, which is to coat it with a very thin layer of oil, something like flaxseed, or if you only have olive oil or canola, that would work as well. But flaxseed tends to last a little bit longer and give a better finish. Once you've covered the entire thing with that oil, you wanna get a dry paper towel or a lint-free cloth, which most people prefer, 
And then you wipe down the whole thing and get off as much oil as possible. Now the reason you do that is you don't want to get a bunch of sticky stuff on there. A lot of times if you have too much oil, you have sticky bits on there and the seasoning won't be quite right. In this case, it's nice and smooth because I did it in really thin layers. Then you put it on the barbecue at 400 to 450 degrees or in your oven if you want to make the people in your house mad and you burn it for about an hour. You let it cool in the oven or in the grill when you're done and you repeat that process two or three times and you should have a pretty good seasoning when you're done. These pans are destined for the trash heap, but with a little bit of effort, we got them in workable condition. And we figured it'd be rude to send it back without making sure they worked, so Mrs. Grill Top Experience helped me make a loaf of sourdough inside the cast iron. She left me in charge to make sure that it baked right and they came out looking awesome. Well, actually, it was a little bit undercooked, but you wouldn't know by looking at it. So let's pretend it was perfect. So one question people might have as you're going through this process is whether or not it's worthwhile. I found this exact same set on Amazon for less than $40. And it would have been easier probably for me just to buy this, ship it to them, and then they'd have a brand new set. But there's something special about taking something that was the only thing left from the fire at your house to getting it back to original condition, or at least close to it, and being able to continue to use it. And that's going to make this pan a family heirloom for years to come.